Last year, Pole Position showed you how to make a wild rally car, and you can see that video at the end of this one. This year, we are back at ProDrive, and we want to show you how to make an Aston Martin racing car. I want to know what goes in to these bad boys. Ben, you took us round for the mini wild rally car. You're back for the Aston Martin tour. We've got to start where it all begins. We're back at chassis. Chassis, this is the heart of every race and rally car, a chassis. And this is a Aston Martin V8 Vantage chassis. And, and this it's is exactly all been stripped right back. Well, if you took all the body panel and bodywork off an Aston Martin rope car, this is what you'd find. And it's all made of? Aluminium. Aluminium. Which is very different to what you find in most road cars. Because Aston's are quite an expensive car, £100,000, the chassis in this is made of lightweight aluminium. And unlike a standard road car, when Aston build them, they glue them together. There's no welding in this. It's all glued together. And our chassis, this chassis that we're going to turn into a Vantage GT3, has come off exactly the same production line as all the road cars that Aston Martin make. So lots and lots of glue goes into an Aston Martin racing car. I never lots knew. Lots of glue, lots <laughs> of glue. Yeah. That's how it's all stuck together. So if you drive an Aston Martin, you're held together by glue. It's very strong stuff. Love it. Right, so I can hear lots of banging going on next door in the next kind of room round. Should we go and investigate what's Let's going go on through there? So this is where all the noise has been coming from. Yep, this is what the, is going on here? The next stage. So this is exactly the same chassis as we've just seen. What the guys here, the technicians, are putting the roll cage into the chassis. We do that with every single Aston Martin we make, and the roll cage is pretty much identical for the Vantage GT4, GT3, and GTE. Made now, of? Steel. Right. So okay. the roll cage is made of steel, the chassis is made of aluminium. What that means is we can't weld the roll cage to the chassis as we would do, say, in the Mini, which is steel chassis because you can't weld, or very difficult to weld, aluminium to steel. So we bolt it in. So each of these metal tubes, very high tensile steel, are fabricated into component parts, which these guys can then fix inside the chassis like this. And this is what gives it extra safety primarily, and a little bit of rigidity in the chassis as well. But primarily, this is here to keep the driver safe. So very similar to the rally car, when we saw the roll cage going in there, it's exactly the same for the Aston Martin. It has to have the same high safety spec. It's, it's, it's exactly the same purpose. In the Mini, it's there to protect the driver, and the co-driver, of course. In here, it's to protect the driver. And there's a lot of design uh, in this that has come out of the Mini WRC uh, roll cage because a lot of work went into that so the two are quite similar so you can learn from each different category that you're you're building for okay so anything else that goes into the chassis here or is this kind of set and ready to go this is pretty much finished a little bit a few more hours work on this and then we'll take this put it in the workshop and the guys over there can add the engine the gearbox and they can finish the car well, i think we need to go and have a look at the engine let's go and have a look so there's so much kit in here. I mean, there are loads of different areas, different components, and I can see lots of different things being worked on here. Why is there so much? <laughs> well, we do a lot of stuff here. So, I mean, for instance, here we've got a mini WRC engine, which is being inspected. And then all around it, we have Aston Martin engines. So we've got a, a GT3 V12 engine being built here. It's another GT3 V12 engine over there. This is a Vantage GT4 engine. It's a V8. Now this is fundamentally a standard road car engine because it's in a GT4 car. The GT3 is the most powerful engine. It's a six litre V12, produces somewhere in excess of 600 horsepower. But actually, ironically, the most complex engine is in the GTE, which produces slightly less power than this. So but we've got three, three different types. We've got the GT3, the GT4, and the GTE. That's right. And the GTE being the most technically advanced. Yes, the most yep. technically advanced, but um, not necessarily the most powerful. Right, okay. The, the GT engine is restricted, is air restricted. So there's a limitation on how much power you can put out of the engine. Um, and whereas with the GT3, the restrictions are, are much less uh, and they performance balance the engine in other ways. Right, okay, so we've got something being put in here. I like this. I like this. So the crankshaft is going into the block. So with all the engines, under regulations, you have to use the standard road car cylinder block and cylinder head. Mm -hmm. So with that, that's a standard road car engine. With the GT3, this is the standard V12 cylinder block out of a road car. Um, it's also the standard crankshaft. And there's a few other standard components, but there's also some specific race components we put into a GT3 engine. When we look at the GT engine, GTE engine, again, you have to keep the cylinder block and cylinder head, but actually, 
after that, everything else is purpose-made as a race engine. You want to be as racy as possible. Well, that looks like it's being neatly fitted in there. I've spied something else over there, which looks slightly different. This is a GTE engine. We're going to have a look at that. So already I'm noticing the difference. We've got some spikes coming out of this. Uh, well, spikes. <laughs> it's a bit like a hedgehog, doesn't it? These will fit the cylinder heads to the um, cylinder block. So this is a GTE engine, and this is the cylinder block from the GTE engine, and it will fit the cylinder heads on top of here. So this is right at the start of the process. The, uh, the engine technician will spend probably another couple of weeks building this engine up into a finished GTE engine. And then finally they'll run it on the dyno? It'll go in the dyno for an hour or two. They'll make sure it's running perfectly before they'll put it in the car and then it'll go testing. <gasps> testing. You've got to remember, these, these engines are designed, they've got to do at least 24 hours. So 25, 26 hours of running because if you go to Le Mans, there's no point in having an engine that won't do 24 hours. Yeah, that wouldn't be so helpful. That wouldn't I be very good, so. would it? So we've got our engines, we've seen the chassis. I'm guessing there are other little parts that we need to investigate that go into an Aston Martin racing car. There are thousands. Right, well, well let's go we find We won't look at all of them, we'll find some <laughs> So there's a shopping list of things here you've got out for us, lots of components. Talk us through what we've got here on the, the desk. Well, we've got a selection of components that go in the Astons because if you imagine how much stuff there is in a road car, all of that is replicated in a racing car. So if you look on this table here, we've got all the components to make a front upright assembly, so that's where the, the wheel will attach to the suspension. So you can have the brakes in there, you can have the wheel bearings, you can have the, the hub and all of that. So that all has to be built by hand. Behind it here we've got a steering rack and uh, this is fundamentally what you see in your road car. So this, this is, is exactly a, the same. It's exactly the same. So this is a powered steering rack, powered by high pressure hydraulics. So when you turn your wheel, if you try to turn your wheel without powered steering these mm. days, you you know, you need biceps like yeah. a, You're gonna be struggling a Russian gymnast. Get around that corner. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Darren Taylor does Russian not want that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that's another element. So all of these different sub-assemblies all get put together here before we take them over to fit them to the car, rather than building all the sub-assemblies next to the car. Make it more simple. And this here, I mean this very, very light, what what job does this have? Well, this is a backing plate on the brakes, not the brakes themselves. So this is part of the front upright assembly. And you've got a, a venting duct in here that helps cool the brakes. Obviously, you want to keep the brakes as cool as possible to be as efficient as possible under heavy braking. Especially when you've got to be running for 24 hours. Exactly. So we've got a couple of those. And then down the, down the end here, we've got a few little extras. Well, so this many is all, goodies. Yeah, this is all part of the, um, the front upright assembly. So this goes in the middle, you can see onto there will bolt the nut, a single nut that goes in the middle of the wheel. And you've got some lugs to position the wheel onto there and then the wheel bearing will go around there as well. So this will be spinning in the centre of the upright. So funny to think of them all doing their own little individual jobs. And then behind us here, this is the gearbox casing. It's a gearbox casing, yeah. And so it's completely empty, there's no gears in it. Uh, this is fundamentally the same in each of the cars and in the GTE car, which is our top spec car we have a paddle shift system. So you flick paddles either side the wheel and it's a six speed system. Previously we used to have a kind of a you know, traditional gear lever that the guys would pull backwards and forwards but now we can have a paddle shift system. Well you mentioned all the technical side, the GTE being a top of the game. Um, I'm now thinking we've got to think about electrics, we've got to think about that side of things. And I've spied over there a board with lots of wires and cables, a lot of concentrated guys over there. Can we go and have a look at the electrical side? Yeah, of and I think we've got an electrical system for an Aston up there now. So Perfect. let's go. So I loved the wiring harness for the Mini World Rally car, and I think I'm going to love the wiring harness for the Aston Martin. It is looking seriously complex. We, this is right at the front, I'm guessing. This is the front. How did you guess that? Well, I saw the steering wheel, which, uh, despite uh, the blonde hair, I'm thinking that might be at the front. That is, and the wipers, as you can see. Yeah, love that. And then if we go a little bit further, oh my goodness, look at this. Yeah. So many wires. I can spy the engine as well. So we've seen the engine on the other side of this workshop, but look at all these little cables. Well, this will all get connected into the engine harness. And if you, oh, if I can pull that off, you can see, I don't know, what's about 60 little pins in there. Oh each goodness. one doing a function and taking a signal to some other part of the car. That's what you can't believe. And there are so many different little parts. So if we work all the way through, and this is, so this is running throughout the car. Yeah, this goes literally from the front of the car to the back. And this will be the first thing that goes on the chassis because it sits at the bottom of the car and is fixed to the aluminium chassis. So you get that in and then you can work around it. So we know yeah. the electrics are all in. And if we work all the way back to the end, we've got the... Yeah. Right rear lights. Ah. 
What's this, like a the, road the damper, the damper sensors and all sorts. So this literally is, sits in the middle of the car, in the heart of the car. It is like the nervous system. And they'll probably find there's another half a dozen chassis harnesses in the car. So we want the engine, the gearbox and other elements of the car. I think my favourite bit here, though, is this one, the data buddy. And I can imagine there is a lot of data that the, uh, the car is giving off. Um, so this looks pretty ready to go. I mean, apart from that little bit there, is this ready to go in the car? It looks like it's pretty much finished. A few bits here in the ceiling, but once they're sealed, it'll go on our machine to be tested to make sure every connection is doing what it's supposed to do, then it'll go in the car. Unbelievable. So we've seen all the components, we've seen the engine, we've seen the chassis, now we've seen the electrics. I think it's time to head back to the workshop and see the GT3, GT4 and GTE all being worked on. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. So lots of cars in here, lots of people, it's a hive of activity. Talk me through what's going on in this workshop. Well, as you can see, it is very busy. So lots of people underneath here as well, in the legs. car. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a real, run on, um, a real run on GT3 cars. Everybody wants our GT3 cars, so we've got to build, I think it's about eight or nine of these um, in quick succession. So we've got some GT3 cars here. We've got a couple of GT4 cars. We've got another uh, GT4 car chassis coming in to be built. If you go across here, we've got some of the GTE car chassis. We've got the chassis from last year. So that's, that's the bare chassis that will get built up into a car in due course. Yeah, they look like they're busy uh, working on that. And then if we move over here, we have got the pinnacle, the top cars from Aston Martin okay. Racing. <laughs> and they look, I mean, they look like they've already been out. Are these cars that have already been raced? Well, these are the cars from last year. So you've got the number 97 car, you've got the number 95 car. So this is a GTE Am and this is a GTE Pro. Right, OK. And um, the difference is just oh, amateur well, Pro. Yeah, well, it gets a bit more complicated. That there, there is, there's a difference in the level of driver you can have, but there's also a slight difference in the specification of the car. One has to be 12 months older than the other one. Right. We, we won't go into that level okay. of detail. No, that's all right. That'll well, get really complicated. Talk, talking of time, um, yeah. we started right back with the chassis. Yeah. We've seen all the components. We've seen the engine. We've seen everything that goes into it. What is the actual time frame that you're working on from beginning to end? How long does it take to get yourself to this this amazing level? To go from the very start to the very finish, I mean, it depends. You, you can do it much quicker or you can do it slower, depending how many people you put on it and when you've got to finish it by. Yeah. We will finish it in time yeah. for when it's got to be done. And these two, actually, are now going to go in the back of the truck this weekend and go to the much sunnier climbs in the Algarve to go oh, I'm testing. I'm soaked as it is. I, I, know. I wish I was going where yeah, the testing I think, I think all the guys here are going to go out there. So we're running these two cars. We've got three GTE cars running down there. We've got about... Uh, half a dozen GT3 cars with our customers running for like 24 hours. My goodness. So these literally, all they've got to do is um, put a few final touches, roll them in the back of the truck and off they go. So those final touches, what are they? Kind of just little few tweaks here and there, a few things still yeah. going into the car here, I can see. Well, I mean, fundamentally, these, these are ready. I mean, everything, these cars are complete. They'll have run the engines just to make sure everything's working. They've got to put the wheels on. Yeah, that Once would be a, a useful on, touch. It will, because they're not moving very far without the wheels. <laughs> Uh, and then they're ready to go. So um, I think they're a little bit ahead of schedule. I think they have Ooh, to finish by ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule yeah. Wow. Um, so talk me through. We've seen the GT3, we've seen the GT4, the GTE now. Talk me through prices. What are we looking at for an Aston Martin well, racing car? If you want to get on the ladder at the bottom row, which is the GT4, mm -hmm. GT4, which is almost the same as a road car but made for racing, starts at about £120,000 and then you can spec it up to about £150,000, £160,000. Okay, okay. So that, that's kind of the entry Still level. making me nervous. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the GT3 car, which kind of sits in the middle, which is 600 horsepower. You've got to be a pretty skilled driver to get one of those. Uh, we're talking starting around about £320,000 and going up to like £350,000, £360,000. Okay, and then hit me with the GT. Then you get on the full works cars like this, so, you know, the latest spec. GTE car. This is around about £550,000. Well, last year when we looked at the rally car, I couldn't afford that. 12 months on, not much has changed. I still can't afford an Aston Martin racing car, but my goodness, thank you so much for taking us through exactly what goes into these awesome machines. You're welcome. Thank you. Keep an eye on the channel. We'll have more how-to videos. And of course, check out the link to how to build a world rally car at the end of this one too. The wheels are probably only actually in contact with the surface about 50% of the time. So the better this... This is a video that Mercedes have released to everybody. Uh, and it's a really great little 3D 